Hello. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Nana Lakshman. I used to work in the PowerShell team from, uh, I think, V1 through all the way through to version 2 of DSC. And currently, I'm with AWS Systems Manager. And today, we are going to talk about AWS Systems Manager and how it supports DSC. So specifically, we look at how we actually run PowerShell commands reliably at scale. Now, when you have a large number of instances, how do you uh, run PowerShell? We'll also look at how to easily secure secrets. This has been one of the most talked about pain points, right? Which is, how do you actually uh, safely pass a credential, securely pass a credential onto an instance? And then we look at how do we configure systems at scale with DSE, uh, some of the ease of use that Systems Manager provides, and the additional uh, DSE enhancements that Systems Manager provides on top of what's already available with uh, PowerShell DSE. So we will walk through those uh, in a bit of detail. So what exactly is Systems Manager? Right? We call it it's the operations cockpit for any cloud and at any scale. So essentially, you can take, you can view your infrastructure. You, know, you can gain operational insights, take actions, group resources together. You know, you can either group resources from like an environment view, saying this is your dev, this is how your test looks like, your prod looks like, or you can group them into like say application views, and you can take actions. Essentially, manage uh, your infrastructure, and that's what Systems Manager provides in a nutshell. If you were to Click a little bit into the details. These are some of the capabilities that Systems Manager have, uh, has to offer. So resource group is the way by which you group resources into, as I said, the different views that's possible. A run command is going to help run commands at scale. It supports both PowerShell for Windows instances and Bash for Linux and a few other things. Inventory is used to collect inventory from instances centrally, so you can look at what's available. For instance, like what software is installed, is there any blacklisted software, is, is you know, all antivirus up to date, and things like that. Patch Manager provides the different patch baselines for patching Windows systems. Um, we recently uh, started supporting application patching for Windows, and uh, you can also like patch Linux systems. Automation is for running operational workflows. Parameter store, so that's the, uh, it's a key value store for storing parameters and secrets securely, so we'll look at some of that. State manager is used for enforcing state and uh, viewing compliance periodically. Maintenance window, as the uh, name suggests, it's for like defining a, a window of time where you can run maintenance tasks uh, within an instance. And session manager is for interactive connectivity to hosts. So these are like, in, in summary, the, the total capabilities that's available in Systems Manager. So specifically, we look at run command. As I said, that's used for running uh, commands at scale, and we look at how we can use run command for running PowerShell at scale. We look at how to use parameter store to store secrets and you know, safely deliver credentials to instances. We also look at how we will use um, State Manager uh, for DSE use cases and view compliance. So the first part of it, let's see how do we run PowerShell commands reliably at scale. So as I said, we'll use run command, and this is a service that supports instances both from EC2 and on-prem instances as well. So therefore, by extension, you can have instance running in, say, like another cloud, and you can have commands run uh, through run command. It has built-in safety features, meaning there is like great control. So if you want to do like 10% of your systems at a time, uh, you'll be able to do that and error thresholds. It's used for uh, most common administrative tasks. You want to run commands at scale. Um, so why does running commands at scale matter, right? The, the important aspect here is, you know, in the cloud and large scale, systems come online and, you know, they, they are out for some time. There are connectivity issues. So all of those are, are taken care of. And a lot of other systems manager capabilities actually leverage uh, run command. So to get a little bit more into details, 
So basically, every uh, instance has a systems manager agent running in it, and for Windows images that's available as part of AWS, the agent is baked in. And when a role with the right permissions are attached, which is pretty easy to do, but I'm not going to go through right now, essentially what it tells is what, what op, uh, attaching a role basically defines what APIs the instance is allowed to call. And the agent calls out to an endpoint in the service to find if there are any commands to run, and then it periodically runs. So that's the key aspect here. It's like the service is not calling into the instance. It's actually the instance polling and then figuring out if there is a command, and then it runs that. So the, as I said, the agent is, uh, is already available uh, in all the Windows uh, instances that's there in Amazon, uh, AWS. So now let's look at uh, how do we run a PowerShell script using run command. So by the way, anyone used uh, AWS here? Okay, it's a good size. So if you go into the AWS console, you will find services under management and governance, you would find systems manager. And so in systems manager, the, all the capabilities that I spoke up about are here in the left side in actions. So you go into run command, and you say run a command, and you got to choose a document. Now, a document is, you can think of another layer of indirection uh, within Systems Manager. Because we support uh, multiple languages and multiple platforms, there is another layer of indirection. So every command is invoked using a document. So to run a PowerShell command, I go and say, you know, run PowerShell script. That's the document. So if you look at it, all it does is, like the content, you basically specify the command as a parameter and it executes in the machine, and there are some other details like parameters, etc. So I select the document, run PowerShell script, and you type. So let's say I want to stop a service. Let's say I want to stop the tablet input service. I don't know why that's running in a server. And now you choose the instances that you would want to run. Is that okay? Okay. So I'm going to like select an instance. Um, you can also specify tags. So tags are mechanisms by which you, you it's basically like you, you tag instances or any resource within AWS. So you can tag saying, okay, this is of type web server or this environment is production, etc. So you can either specify by tags or selecting instances. So I'm going to select one. And this is the rate control I was talking about. So you can say how many targets you want to run it on and what your error threshold. So the default is you can run it on 50 instances with no error threshold, but you can tweak that. And you can either have the output output to the console, which obviously is going to be limited in size. And if there is a lot of output the command generates, you can redirect it to an S3 bucket. Uh, an S3 bucket is like a, a storage environment in AWS. Then I'm going to run the command. So now the command is running in the instance. So there we go. So I can click on it and view the output. OK. Some errors, but the command did run. Now, one of the other things we would want to do is you may want to run specific scripts. Now, each document uh, within Systems Manager is uh, an ARND resource, which means it's a, it's a first-class resource in AWS. So you can associate permissions as to who can run that particular document and on which resources. So let's say if I want to have a particular script return and I want to uh, target a specific set of instances in which that script would run, you would basically create a new document. So I'm going to filter all the documents that are basically owned by me. So there are documents that are published by Amazon for common tasks which start with an AWS dash, and there are documents that I author. So here is an example document. So if you basically look at this, it's in YAML. So essentially, you have your script with the bunch of annotations or the schema uh, for the document itself, right? The version of the schema, a description of what it does, uh, the main steps. So there are a few things, as I said earlier, you can run within an instance. You can run a PowerShell script, or you can update the agent, you can collect inventory, etc. So I'm running a PowerShell script. Name and the input is, here is the command, so you can inline, essentially, the, the whole script there. 
So I can then go ahead and run it the same way. So you choose, you choose an instance, and you just go ahead and say um, you run. So the, the command runs. So that's how um, we run a command at scale, if you think about it, in uh, AWS in instances. Now, as I said, these instances can also be on-prem or on another cloud. Now, you can also uh, run uh, in, uh, like commands in, in a different way using uh, state manager. Now, as I said, state manager, the, the primary use case is for ensuring there is a desired state and reporting compliance. But essentially what it does is it executes commands across instances. You can either do it one time or on a schedule. Now, the key thing about state manager is this. Once you create an association, I'll show what an association means. Um, whenever a new instance with that specified tag is launched, it automatically runs the command. Um, and if it's scheduled, then for every instance that has the tag on the schedule, the command gets run. So if you want to say, like, every time a security policy needs to be enforced or, you know, certain configuration needs to happen on a machine, you can use state manager, and, you know, whenever an instance with that tag comes up, then that command is automatically run. And the existing uh, safety features that we just saw in run command is also available in there. So let's look at how to do that. And again, these are the building blocks on which we would be using uh, DSC. So on the left side, you have state manager. So I can say I want to create an association. You specify a name. So you say disable. And then you choose the document that you would want to execute. So in this case, let me pick the document I would want. Specify the version of the document. And then you can say, how do you want to specify targets? So now I say, I want to specify them using tags. So I say, the type is web server. I want to run it. So this is the tag I want to use. And you can choose on a schedule or you know, run association once. Now, schedule, basically, you have you know, different ways of building a schedule. It periodically enforces. Run once is whenever an instance comes up for the first time. And it also applies to all future instances that will be launched with this specified tag here. So I say I want to run it on a schedule. Yeah? Uh, can you have triggers? Uh, not in State Manager, but there are other ways of doing uh, triggers uh, within Systems Manager. And you specify what the, the compliance security is if you know, there is an error running uh, uh, the command, what you want it to be. You pick something, and you can specify the rate control, and you say, create an association. So now an association is created, and you can go into the association, and you can see the execution history of you know, when the association runs. So this ran just now because we created, and it'll run every 30 minutes. You can click through that, and you find, like, OK, here are the set of instances uh, that were available at that moment in time on which this uh, particular command was run. And you can just view the output, which is similar to what we already saw. So this is the second building block. So you can enforce, like you can run any command. You can enforce policies, or you can periodically enforce desired uh, state. Uh, we support uh, PowerShell DSE. We also support like uh, other configuration uh, management systems that can leverage this. OK, so that was the first. Like, you know, how do we run PowerShell commands reliably at scale? We use run command to fan out and run to a large number of instances. And if you want to run on a schedule or whenever uh, a new instance is launched, we can use state manager. The next is, how do we easily secure secrets? So here's where we'll use parameter store, right? Um, it's a parameters and secret management service. So you can store any parameter, or you can store any secret in there. It basically helps separate configuration uh, from code. It provides you know, hierarchy, and there is uh, version control. You can audit and you know, control access at granular levels, meaning like you can decide which user has access to which parameters, and you know, which resources can access which parameters, et cetera. It also supports change notifications. You, know, you can trigger automatic actions. Like, for example, when something is not used 
for some time or uh, you know something that's about to expire and things like that. So that's what uh, parameter store in, in summary offers. But the easy way to think about it is it's a key value store where you can store your configuration data and you can store your credentials and other secrets. So now let's look at how do you retrieve secrets from parameter store. By the way, I'm using the AWS console here uh, for demo because it's easy to follow. But everything I do, of course, this is you know the PowerShell audience. You can run uh, using PowerShell commands. Uh, in fact, like all the demos were prepared using PowerShell, so those scripts will be later available for you to grab and play around with. So you find share resources on the left side. There is parameter store. So go in there, and you can basically create uh, all the parameters or configuration data that you would want. I have some pre-populated, but essentially you say you want to create a parameter, you give it a name, you can give it an optional description. Um, there is standard and advanced type. There are subtle differences. Um, the one thing is standard, you have a limit of 10,000 parameters, uh, up to 4KB in size, and parameter policies are not available, and it's, there's no additional charge. Advanced, um, you get more than 10,000 parameters, large sizes, and most importantly, if you want a high TPS, that's where you would use an advanced for most practical purposes of instance management, standard just works. And you can say a string, string list, or a secure string. A secure string is what you would use for secrets. So you can say, you just create it. Uh, you can optionally tag it, and you say create parameter. And that's it. So I have a list of parameters created. Yeah. Okay, the question is, does it map to a, a .NET secure string? Um, you can think of it notionally that way, but the way it is actually encrypted behind the scenes is using um, the KMS encryption of AWS. So by default, you know, the, the services uh, KMS key is used uh, to encrypt if the user doesn't provide, or there is an option for users to provide their own KMS keys, and that's just encrypted with that. So that's what the secure string means. But Conceptually, yeah, it's, it's a secret that's encrypted, either using the services key or the user-provided key. So now I can go to run command. And, yep? Uh, is there a reason I would use this instead of secrets manager for the sensitive keys? Okay, so the question is, uh, is there a reason I would use this instead of using secrets manager uh, for sensitive keys? So Secrets Manager is another service that's available in AWS uh, that also stores secrets, but it provides uh, an additional value in that it provides a key rotation for specific use cases. So for storing regular configuration data, you would use Parameter Store. Uh, if you don't want uh, you know, key rotation and you just want to store secrets, you would use Parameter Store. Uh, if you want key rotation support, you would use Secrets Manager. And the nice thing is there is also a parameter store acts as a facade for secret managers, so you have a central place through which you can um, manage. So what, what differs is like whether you have key rotation enabled or not, and you know the, the pricing is different. I'm glad that you are followed secrets manager. Happy to know that. So here is the document for. So essentially, the way you do with this. Um, there is a PowerShell command get SSM parameter. You specify the name. And if it's a secure string, you say with decryption, and then you convert that into a secure string, and you just construct your credential object. It's that simple. And then once you get it, so you can basically now run the command. So let's say I specify an instance. I just go execute it. And you see the output, essentially you can. So this is how you, you um, construct a credential object within an instance. You basically fetch the secure string parameter um, uh, and then like you know convert it into a PS credential object and now you can start using it within the scripts. Okay, so now that we learned how to easily secure secrets. The next thing is, how do we configure um, systems at scale with DSC, right? How do we start with configuring one instance and you know scale it up to N? Um, then how do we enforce configuration complaints on a schedule, obviously using state manager? We'll also look at the complaints reports 
and, and how that looks like within Systems Manager. And then the other interesting feature is, how do we handle multiple configurations at once? Uh, so that's going to be uh, an interesting feature that uh, we will uh, look at. And handling multiple configurations without having to worry about partial configurations, that's going to be the key aspect. And then how do we acquire uh, secrets and configuration data from parameter store? Now, this is not using the PowerShell command, but the extensions that we have for DSE that lets you do that very easily uh, and at a low cost. Then some of the enhanced uh, reboot behavior and how, how do we fetch modules from a public and private repos. So these are kind of like some of the um, capabilities that DSE has. Uh, sorry, the, the DSE in Systems Manager has, right? So essentially, if you think about it, DSE will leverage the language authoring, so you author your configuration in PowerShell. There's obviously the DSE resource coverage that's available in PowerShell DSE that is leveraged. And then, this, of course, the standard MOF definition. So you compile your configuration into a MOF that has all the imperative code expanded, and then you deliver it to instances. Now, what our systems manager has to offer, it's cloud native, it's built for scale. There is the safety and security aspects. There is the compliance reporting aspects within um, Systems Manager that we leverage. And of course, it works for AWS, it works on-prem, and it works in other clouds. So the idea is you blend the two, and you have happy customers. So that's what we essentially did with um, DSC. So now let's look at how do we configure instances using DSC. So I have our standard fourth coffee uh, configuration here. For those of you who have seen a few DSC demos in the past, this is one of the you know, typical uh, web server configuration examples that we would use. So here is a configuration. Uh, it imports a bunch of resources, configures IIS, ASP, turns off the default websites, you know, copies contents, uh, creates a new website, some policies, et cetera, right? This is the uh, configuration. And then what, uh, what you do is you first compile the configuration, generate the MOF, and you upload the MOF into an S3 bucket. So S3 is, like as I said, a, uh, a storage uh, within AWS. So the MOF is compiled, and I upload it into my S3 bucket here. And, and within a folder in there, I have a bunch of MOFs updated. So now, in order to um, enforce DSE, you could go and either run a command or you can do state manager. So let me start with this running a command on an instance. Oops, logged out. Okay. And there is a command called apply DSE moths. Uh, that we're going to use. So I get the configuration. So I get the configuration URL from storage. So you say, what is the config? What are the MOFs you want to apply? So I specify the MOF I want to apply here, and I want to run it in the apply mode. Uh, so before that, let me make sure this is the instance. And the instance does not have fourth coffee configured, just to show that this is actually working. Okay. So the MOF is in apply mode, and we'll not worry about the other parameters for now. So let's go down. So I'm going to select an instance. Select this instance, and I'm just going to run it. So now this uh, command is in progress. So let's give it a few, few seconds to complete. So essentially, what this document does is it runs a, a PowerShell script within the instance, and what that PowerShell script runs is it downloads another PowerShell uh, script from uh, an internal S3 bucket and gets the MOF files and applies them uh, within the instance. Question? Yeah. Does that mean that you're completely bypassing the LCM in this case? 
Um, that's a good question. Uh, yes. So I, I will get into the details of uh, what happens here, but in a, in a nutshell, that's, that's what is happening. Taking a little while for the command to complete. So while this is happening, let me switch gears and, and look at um, what's happening behind the scenes. So this is the managed instance. So as you can see, there is no pending or current dot moth in here that basically tells you that this command is um, running, bypassing the LCM. So what this does, though, is it downloads this particular script. Uh, I'm not sure if it's visible, but essentially a, a script called AWS Apply DSC MOFs. And when I try to actually open it, it basically wouldn't open. There is an error. And the reason for that is very simple. Okay, so while this is running, so let's get to the document that we had, which is apply DSC MOFs. So if you look at it, the apply DSC MOFs, essentially what it does is it is downloading this file, and if you go down, you will find that it, it basically what it does is it, it encrypts uh, the file uh, for the current user when it downloads the PS1. So if you look at this particular line, this parameter basically says, um, you know, it's downloaded and encrypted. And obviously the agent is a service running on a Windows instance, therefore it's running in the system context, so you can't decrypt the file. So what I did is I copied the exact same contents and created my own version of the document without uh, the encrypter so we can actually download and take a look at the file. So let's go ahead and run that command. So I say run command owned by me. So this is the copy. So this is how easy it is to like, you know, modify the existing documents. You essentially copy, make the modifications, create a new document, and, and you execute that. So I have this document that's going to download the file um, in, in a non-encrypted way. I will run the default Hello World configuration so it runs quick. And let's go and select this instance, which I believe is instance two. Yes. And let's run that. Well, let's see what happened to this guy. Okay, yeah. So this um, succeeded. So the first instance, let's make sure this works. Okay. So there is it's a standard fourth coffee website being configured. And as you can see, um, it is bypassing the LCM. So there is no pending dot or uh, partial dot uh, uh, current dot So what it's trying to do, though, okay, it downloaded this file. So let's open this one. So essentially, what is here is this is a big PowerShell script that has, is almost um, mimicking the behavior of uh, the LCM and then extending it. So you can find that, you know, control F, it's using the invoke DSC resource. So we're using PowerShell language for authoring the configurations, but you get them off, and the, the reason is there were certain uh, extensions to the LCM that we would like, and obviously the LCM is not yet open source, so it's basically the LCM functionality is replaced uh, by, by this whole PowerShell script that essentially takes those resources, uses invoke, invoke DSC resource, takes them off, uses invoke DSC resource, applies them, and then that's how all the extensions that we're going to talk about in a bit are built on top of. So that's, that's what's happening behind the scenes uh, for the use of DSC. But the nice thing about this is, given that the configurations are all authored in PowerShell, there is no uh, you know, visible change for the customer. So the customer authors it the exact same way they're used to, and they compile it, get them off, and then use this to apply. So that's how uh, this works. 
Okay. So that's configuring uh, in, in DSC and the geeky details. We already saw that, which is essentially, you know, the LCM is kind of replaced with our own script uh, that does most of the functionality. So that gives blend of both worlds. And then now let's look at how compliance view looks like. So in Systems Manager, so on the left side you see an inside there is compliance, so you can go in there and you would find, okay, custom DSC, which is the, the DSC re reporting that's happening there. And you can, let's say, uh, pick an instance. So let's go here, we ran the, and you can see, look at configuration compliance. It's reporting on each of the resources, you know, whether it's compliant or not. And uh, finally, it will specify like the whole MOF, um, it's compliant. So that's how you get uh, the resource level view of what's happening uh, in, with respect to the configuration. So you author configuration in PowerShell, uh, you get the MOF, you upload it, you enact it using either run command or state manager, and then it automatically reports the compliance information in a way that's tied to the compliance reporting uh, within systems manager at a resource level. So that's what uh, that module does. Now, let's look at some of the enhancements that a systems manager DSC provides, right? Essentially, it's for like, you know, desired state with security and scale. What, what do we provide? The first one is um, token substitutions at runtime. So essentially, you can have certain tokens as strings in PowerShell that gets embedded into your MOF that we substitute uh, during runtime. Um, uh, we'll look at some of those. Then, of course, there is the centralized credential management. We'll look at how we leverage parameter store to simplify that. Uh, some of reboot enhancements uh, compared to the default uh, LCM behavior. There's obviously the, uh, uh, an option to save detailed reports as JSON. Now where this comes in handy is the default behavior is reporting as I showed into the compliance dashboard. But you can also have detailed uh, reporting in, the, in JSON that it, you can lock to an S3 bucket. And you can use services like AWS Athena to basically build rich dashboards on top of it if you want to build custom uh, reporting solutions. And then I will show you about like how do we support public and private module repositories. So when it comes down to tokens, so the first one is about using an environment variable. So when we do uh, an n colon uh, in this format uh, within the configuration, that obviously is a string in PowerShell, so it gets embedded into the MOF. So that's post process on the instance um, before the configuration is applied. In fact, this was one of the uh, very common asks. Um, there are a couple of workarounds we tried with uh, the environment pro, uh, resource provider, uh, but this works much better. Then there is the ability to retrieve the tag of the instance. You just specify uh, tag colon, uh, whatever is the tag that you would want to uh, retrieve, and that tag value is now available for uh, application within the configuration. And this is a useful concept because all resources are most, most common way of uh, operating on resources is by way of tagging. So this was an important ask. So you say tag colon and that tag is available within the instance. Next is how do we um, retrieve a value from a parameter store? So this, you just specify SSM colon, the name of the parameter, and uh, what it does is it looks up the, the PowerShell script that I showed you basically looks up the parameter store, finds parameter with that particular value, and then substitutes it here. So this goes back to, if, if you were looking at um, Kenneth and Bruce's session yesterday, there was a question on what that SSM drive is, and this is what it is. When you say SSM colon, you're essentially referring to uh, a parameter within the parameter store in SSM. So it looks like an SSM drive, um, and then you just retrieve the parameter, it gets substituted. So it's a nice way of separating like the environment specific information, yes. Does um, parameter store let you like restrict the characters in like tags and whatever, so that you don't end up causing like script injection vulnerabilities in these replacements? So the the uh, question is, does parameter store uh, restrict the uh, characters that you can uh, put put in a string? Uh, the short answer is no. 
uh, it's because like it's just a key value store and whatever you feed in there uh, comes in so it's 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 a little uh, to some extent uh, the onus is on the user to ensure that uh, such things don't happen There's also the other thing called uh, tag SSM colon. This is very useful for testing scenarios. So essentially, when you say tag SSM, it basically first looks up to see if there is a specific tag. And if the tag is not there, then it looks up in parameter store. So this is mostly used in testing scenarios where you, know, you want to test something out. You really don't want to like, you know, reach out to parameter store because maybe you are like, you know, individually testing a component. So you'll just tag it, have it tested. But when it goes to production, it, it looks up from the uh, parameter store. Next is, um, how do we uh, support credentials? So as I said, uh, because Parameter Store is a facade to secrets manager, which does secrets rotation, uh, we support both Parameter Store and you know, secrets manager uh, credentials here. So the credentials must be stored in the JSON format. So essentially, you go into Parameter Store and store username password this way. Um, and then all that is required is in your script before you compile, given that uh, in, you know, there are certain compilation rules for DSC. You put in essentially a dummy password, uh, but make sure that the username actually maps to um, the parameter store um, key. So essentially what you do is you go to parameter store, the name of the parameter is, in this case, my secret parameter name, and the value is essentially stored um, like this in, in the JSON format. And once you do that, uh, then you, you essentially say SSM colon, and it, it figures out and that this is a credential, and the substitution happens um, at runtime. So that's how you would um, store a secret. So the next thing is about uh, how do we enhance reboots. So one of the uh, problems uh, that people who developed this encountered was you don't want to describe all of the configurations at one because there are different teams are defining different configurations. There is the security team that defines what the security configuration looks like, and there's another app team that defines what the app configuration looks like, so on and so forth. So there was this need uh, to apply uh, you know, multiple configurations, and that is one thing that we support. So you can have multiple MOFs. You could come up and say, okay, apply all of these. But then, then there was the question of, okay, if the default LCM is leveraged, sometimes there is the possibility that you know, when you iterate through each of them, you want to reboot. So there is an aggregate reboot behavior uh, that's supported, um, where you can say you either want to, you know, apply all the MOFs and reboot, or you can choose to reboot after every, or you can actually choose to reboot like you can say like never, which means it doesn't automatically reboot after the configuration is applied. And whenever the maintenance window of the instance kicks in, and you actually go ahead and, and reboot the instance. So that has been one of the popular asks is like, you know, at different points in time, different schedules come in, they would apply the policy. However, when the maintenance window kicks in, you do a reboot, and after that, all of the policy kicks in. So it was kind of uh, a nice uh, enhancement in there. There is also an option of uh, uh, running a script before rebooting that lets you do any, any tasks that you would want to do before a reboot happens. And as I said, there's an option to prevent rebooting, so you can do that later um, in uh, the maintenance window. Then there is the support for module uh, repositories. The default, though, is to download from PowerShell Gallery. However, you have the option of downloading from an S3 bucket, in which case we zip it in the standard format supported by DSC, right? Module name underscore module version. So the traditional form that people are used to uh, in terms of zipping these modules in the on-prem servers, uh, or the on-prem pool server, um, the same format, you could zip them up and upload to an S3 bucket, and the module gets downloaded um, onto the instance. So now let's look at a demo that essentially has all of these enhancements put together. So as I said, all of these enhancements you can see in the document parameters. So if you go to run a command, you would see that so MOS to apply can be comma separated. And uh, they can either be in HTTPS format or this way, you know, S3 colon bucket colon file colon key. Uh, what is the operation mode? You can say apply or report only. Uh, 
if you want to, the enhanced JSON reporting that I said, you can say where you want to store them. Uh, this is the module source bucket name. So if this is none, then allow PS gallery module source needs to be true. So I want to replace that, let's say, with this one. And I can say, uh, here is the format, right? So it should be bucket region colon bucket name. So this is my bucket region, US East 1. And my bucket name is psconf EU 2019. And I want to specify multiple MOFs. So in my ST console, I essentially split the same configuration into two, one that configures the features and one that actually configures the um, website. So let me copy that. So this is one. So this is my module source bucket. And then here you have the reboot behavior that we spoke about. It's after morph immediately or never. So we leave it at after morph. And then the compliance type. So the default is custom DAC, but you can say, like, you know, you want to say my compliance type, whatever. So essentially, um, there is a default set of uh, inventory that the system collects. And you can have custom types for compliance reporting that gets added. So the default that DSE uses is custom DSE. But if you run like more than one association for configuring different things, you would want to use different ones so you know which association is actually failing in there. So that's configurable. And optionally, you can specify what is the uh, pre-boot script that you would want to run. So let's do that, let's say, with uh, State Manager. So we actually know what it feels to configure. So let's say configure. Web servers. I'm going to use apply DSC mobs. Apply. Then you can specify tags, saying type is web server. And you would want to run it in a schedule, say run every one hour or every eight hours, whatever you would want. You can specify the and great control. So you say run it on 10 person at a time. So the association gets created, and you'd find the execution history. So it's currently running on five instances. So we'll write that one. And as you see here, in so this is how I have uploaded the, the DSC resources that I would want, just zipped, put them up into a bucket, and that serves as the module repository. So and you would see that whatever is the type that you would use for that particular association will show up. So custom DSC is the default. Now if that changes, now you would see which association essentially like you know is reporting compliance on and what succeeded and what failed. So that's this. Some of them failed, and you could now you know go and take a look at you know why they failed. So let's look at the compliance reporting here. And it takes a while for the complaints to refresh, so it may not be available uh, right away. OK, there is some issue loading the modules. Anyway, I don't want to troubleshoot it now, but uh, trust me, this works. Uh, okay. 
So that's in summary, right? We can run PowerShell commands uh, at scale, and you can easily secure uh, the secrets, uh, store them in parameter store, and you can reference them directly from uh, DSC configurations. And given the way uh, it's been built on top of DSC by completely bypassing the LCM, you get everything that you know, PowerShell DSC offers, plus the enhancement that we spoke about, right? It's easy to scale from uh, you know, one to n instances. You can handle multiple configurations, directly reference secrets from parameter store, enhance reboot behavior, build com custom compliance, and fetch from either you know, PowerShell gallery or private repos. How about cross-platform? Cross now, Systems Manager inherently supports uh, cross-platform. But this specific DSC support that we are looking at is uh, specific to uh, Windows. And the reason is the existing PowerShell, is, what it uses is Windows PowerShell, uh, not, uh, uh, not PowerShell Core. So, uh, but Systems Manager as a whole, like most of what we did, doing run command and state manager, you can use with like, for instance, in Linux systems, we have support for like Ansible, that's, that's used. But this one was very specific for Windows PowerShell. So the, the question is, um, similar to how DSC modules are downloaded from uh, S3, is there a way for scripts to download the dependencies? Now, the way to do that is uh, a, a two-pronged approach. So there are power, uh, systems manager documents that lets, lets you install PowerShell modules in an instance. And then you have, obviously, the document that lets you run a PowerShell script. Uh, and then you could typically, if, if people want to run things in a sequence, you put together an automation workflow where you say you first install the desired set of modules on the instances that you would want, and then you would go ahead and uh, install scripts. Now, if the scripts themselves were to download, that's also supported. Uh, but the common pattern that we have seen is, you know, run the document first, install the dependencies, and then run the next step that will actually execute the, the command. So the slides and demo code is available in GitHub slash Nana Lakshman uh, slash PSConf EU 2019. Um, so the slides would be available. You could go download, and the demos are all available. You can set the environment up um, using a bunch of cloud formation templates and PowerShell scripts. So there is a setup.ps1. Just run it. It sets this up, and you can play around. Uh, with, or you can use the CDK. Yes. Questions? Uh -huh. um, so the question is, uh, you know, given that the LCM is bypassed, how do we support uh, composite resources? So the script uses invoke DSC resource um, under the covers. I don't remember on top of my head if Invoke DSC resource currently supports composite resources. No, the answer is. OK, so that's the answer from Bruce. So essentially, composite resources are uh, only uh, required at compile time. And once the MOF is compiled, they essentially are compiled into the underlying resources. Um, so it really doesn't matter. Yes, um, uh, as Bruce says, people have been asking this um, for a long time. But I will defer that uh, uh, you know, question right now to Steve uh, <laughs> as to you know, when that will get answered. OK. So, so how does this work across cloud and, and on-premise? Because I see a lot of AWS specific tooling, I would assume. Uh, how do I get that to my on-premise box? OK. So the question is, how do I actually get this on uh, to the on-premise box? You have a few minutes, so let me quickly show you this. So when you go to Systems Manager, on the left side, in shared resource, you have something called activations. So you go there, 
to activations and you basically create an activation. Uh, let's say my some activation here. And what this does is it gives you um, essentially an activation code. So you see that there's an activation code and activation ID that it generates. Now, once you go to the instance and you can refer to the, uh, the link here that tells you how to install the agent and run this activation code and activation ID. Once that is done, then that particular instance now shows up in the console here as a managed instance. So it, it will be um, an instance on-prem or it can be in any other cloud, but once you install the agent and run the activation code, the agent knows where to talk to and it shows up as a managed instance, and then a managed instance can be tagged and everything will just work the same way. Is the agent open source? Uh, the question is, is the agent open source? The answer is yes, the agent is open source. Um, it is available by default and, uh, as I said, in Amazon Images for Windows, uh, Amazon in, uh, uh, Images for like Amazon Linux, and uh, uh, some, some flavor of uh, Unix, uh, Linux, yes. It is on GitHub, and in fact, people have ported the agent for like Raspberry Pi and, and things like that. Uh, so yes, the agent is open source, uh, and, and once you have the agent installed and the activation code, then the agent knows it will register itself at the instance as a managed node, and you could see it in other managed instances here. So the only difference would be the instance ID will be an MI dash, and so it looks like you know it's a, it's a, it's a managed instance and it will behave the same way. So you can tag it, you can run everything that you can do on EC2 instances. So that's how you would uh, support um, on-prem or other clouds. The URL, yes, so the URL is here. Let me open that up. Um, so this is the URL, github.com slash nana lakshmanan slash psconf eu2019. Um, it also has the slides. The slides has the uh, URL, but somewhere you, you'll need to know where to grab. Any other questions? And obviously, the, there are also some of the documents that we are developing that's available in github.com slash AWS labs slash systems manager. Um, that's a good starting point uh, to clone those repos and you know, author your own documents for either specific use cases or um, if, if you want to extend the agent for supporting specific platforms, all of those are possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is, um, there is um, uh, apply and then report only for MOFs. Why not apply and monitor? Now, technically, the apply here is uh, essentially apply and uh, monitor, right? Uh, the, the other option of apply, you know, once and, and it depends on how you configure the, the, uh, the association. So for apply and monitor, you will do apply once. And for apply on auto correct, you will say apply on a schedule. So that's that's how it maps to, because uh, there are existing constructs within Systems Manager. So we try to map it to the existing constructs. So you know apply is what would would translate as I said. Uh, if you have it on a schedule, it's apply on auto correct. If you have it on run once, then apply means apply and monitor, and report only is monitor only. Correct. We are, we are bypassing the LCM, but conceptually, that's, that's how you would use it. So uh, the question is, is the agent able to run in a different uh, security context than system? Uh, the answer for now is uh, no, the agent runs as system. But the way we do that is that's where you control everything through uh, the user permissions, the IAM permissions of the user in uh, AWS. So that's where you create documents uh, on which scripts that you would want to run, and then say which specific users have those permissions, and then everything goes uh, from the Systems Manager console. So, so that just only handle the credentials. Say I have a script that requires PS credentials, right? So how do you handle that? So um, the the question is how do we answer uh, how do we handle PS run as um, credentials? Uh, I think PS run as credentials is handled uh, by the way of 
using creds and passing it and uh, you know given how invoke ts series was handled under the covers So uh, again, on, on top of my head, I don't remember if Invoke DSA repo supports credentials. Uh, if it does, then yes, but I, I don't think it, it, it supports. So that, that's the, the limitation. I mean, that's, that's good feedback. I'll take back to the team to see what we can do there. Okay. So no further questions? Thank you. Thanks for your time.